Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to another tip in our Photoshop for Video series. What I'd like to explore today is panoramic photography. Now, traditionally, panoramic photography is more for photographers, and they would take several images and stitch them together into a very wide photo. But with Photoshop CS3, panoramic photography can be for anyone, including videographers and cinematographers. One technique that I like to employ on location shoots these days is to shoot multiple photos of the backdrop or the locale. Then, using Photoshop, these can be stitched together into a virtual set. That way, if you have to do a pickup, you may not have to actually go back to the location. Rather, you can use green screen and insert the person into the set virtually. Let's learn how to use Photoshop CS3 as well as After Effects CS3 to pull this technique off both affordably and quickly. What you're seeing here is the end result. I've dropped a video clip over a corrected background that I built using Photoshop CS3. And building these is really quite simple. Let's go ahead and reset and go back to our default workspace here really quick. And if you look at the layers palette, you'll see that we have this image. I can go ahead and move this around and reposition because in fact it's quite large. So this gives me a lot of options if I had to put an interviewee subject into the scene. Everything from the bay all the way back to the city itself. Now, how did such a great photo come to be? Well, it was really quite simple. While on location, you shoot several exposures. In a perfect world, you'd be using a tripod. In fact, even a panoramic tripod that would click the camera a certain number of set degrees. But perfect world and video production rarely go together. So as long as you could shoot the photos with a little bit of overlap, this works. Essentially, position your body and twist at the waist. Turn yourself and take the first exposure. Then turn your body and create just a little bit of overlap and take the next exposure. And then turn your body and overlap a little bit more and the next. In doing so, you can create overlap that Photoshop can use to automatically align the photos and position them together. Ideally, you will turn the camera to its upright position so you are shooting photos that are taller or portrait orientation. Now, with all of these ideals, you would think that you'd have to be perfect. I did everything wrong. I shot this handheld, I shot it with a widescreen ratio, and didn't even bother to really do that much overlap. Let's push Photoshop CS3 and see what it can do when the photographer really isn't very good. Let's go ahead and choose File Browse and we'll go to Bridge. And I am going to go to a folder of images that I've picked. Let's come up here and inside of my Photo Merge folder here, here's the finished panorama. But I'll open it up here and if you look, you'll see that this one was taken using six exposures. This is down in Mexico City and if you look here, you'll see there's some overlap between all the photos. I could select those and press Command A or Control A and then choose Tools, Photoshop, Photo Merge. Those images all get loaded in and on the left here we have some options to choose. I can use Perspective which will just bend the images to make a match or Cylindrical which will actually warp to line the images up. But I find that Auto generally does a pretty good job. Plus, if I choose the option to blend the images together, it will automatically compensate for slight differences in exposure. Say if you left your camera on auto exposure, like I did inadvertently. Click OK and Photoshop will open up those images and process them all. Now, fortunately, Photoshop CS3 is quite fast. And if you're running it on a modern computer, this task really doesn't take very long. In fact, you see here, it's already opened up all six images and it's analyzing them, quickly aligning them based upon the content of the images, doing complex pixel matching to make sure that the images are precisely positioned with each other. When this is done, it will distort the images as needed and create one giant panoramic photo 
that's going to be automatically sized. And in fact, you see, it's done. Photoshop automatically bent the images and dealt with any distortion necessary to create a seamless panoramic photo. If we come here and look at the middle, you'll see that what it did is a very complex mask based upon the image details. If we turn that on there, you'll see it is indeed seamless. If you look at that closely, you would be hard pressed to find where one photo blends into another. If we toggle that off there, you'll see it's right there. But again, to the visible eye, you cannot see that. At this point, I'll press Command-0 to zoom out and select the Crop tool by pressing C. We'll crop this image so it is a nice, even rectangle. And if we're not completely happy with it, we can clone in some areas as needed. There we go. If satisfied, I could reduce file size by going ahead and flattening the image. And one thing that I'd like to do is go ahead and convert this to a smart object. Now that was simply done by right clicking and saying convert to smart object. The reason why I did this is because Photoshop CS3 supports the use of smart filters. We could take advantage of this and we'll go ahead and process this by doing a slight Gaussian blur. And essentially what I'm doing is defocusing the backdrop. Let's view this at 100%. Click OK. And if I'm not satisfied, I could just double click on that filter and adjust. This way I get a live filter very much like After Effects. So if I change my mind, I double click and I can modify the filter. In fact, this works even after closing the document. That's working well. Let's go ahead and add a photo filter from the adjustment layer menu. And I am gonna go ahead and choose to cool this down a little bit, making the skies bluer. We've got three different cooling filters and each one behaves a little bit differently, but tries to simulate the traditional filters used by photographers. I'll decrease the density so it's not so strong and click OK. At this point, we could save the file and I'm just going to go ahead and call this a widescreen image. And let's just store that back out to the folder that we were working with. I'll put it back here into the photo merge. And I could save this as a layered TIFF file if I want, or a PSD. There we go. And we'll switch over to After Effects while that saves. So now that we're in After Effects, we can go ahead and choose to key this footage. Let's choose Effect Keying, and I'll use the Color Range key, but you may also want to try Key Light, which is a pretty effective keyer. We'll go ahead and take the eyedropper here and click near the subject to get our initial key, and then we could take the plus eyedropper and click around the person here to pick up more. In fact, if we just click and drag while holding, you'll see that it picks up more of the area. That's doing a pretty good job. Let's just get a little bit more here. And we've got a good initial key. What I could then start to do is pick up just a little bit. We could adjust the fuzziness if we need to. And notice how that cleans up the edges some. And then if we need to, we can go ahead and just make some small adjustments to some of the values to cut in a little bit. There you go, pretty decent key. And one of the things that I like is that the background has got quite a bit of options. So if we go ahead and adjust it here, we've got a wide range of backdrops that we can use to key her over. And what I'd recommend is using an adjustment layer to go ahead and get her color to more closely match the background. So if we choose Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, we can actually take advantage of that Photoshop effect. So on the adjustment layer, I'm just going to use the photo filter. And the easiest way to find that is to come on over to the effects and presets and we'll just type in photo. There's the photo filter. We'll drag that on top of the adjustment layer. And you'll see that the exact same presets that were available over in Photoshop are now available here. And we can go ahead and tone that down if we need to and make some color correction to get that layer to work. There it is. It's affecting the image. We can also go after her just a little bit. Let's go ahead and apply that photo filter to her. And we can go ahead and set that to cooling. 
and we can adjust that to match so her skin tone better matches the backdrop. Using the new and improved Photo Merge is an excellent way to create backdrops for use with Chroma Key. To learn more about how to use Photoshop for video, feel free to check out my resource site, photoshopforvideo.com, as well as the weekly podcast and book of the same name.